folks, it's Bill. Welcome to another video about Ansible. And today we are going a bit deeper just to see how I'm using Ansible playbooks to keep my Zoe SMP updated. My start point here was uh, the Docker container that I put together, uh, the basic configuration for Ansible. So if you haven't seen this video before, I will add the, the link here in the comments. So you can take a look there and get it started too. So let's take a look in some modifications and how I'm configuring, uh, how I have everything configured here. Uh, for that, let's get it started with Ansible config file. Two things are important here are the, ho the host key checking. So that will allow me to skip the fingerprint confirmation and the inventory that will point where my inventory is located. So here on the inventory, I have the host file where I point my server. You can know that before my URL, the address from my server, I have that TVT5106. So I'm using that also as a group. And Ansible will take this identifier when I'm using the group verse to identify uh, where are the file with my variables. So inside of the group bars, I have the information that I need to connect to my helper. I have some information about my environment. So where is my Zoho home, or the Python path. Uh, I have here some uh, in variables that I'm using inside of the playbook. So the PTFs I'm applying, what's my CSI, my target zone. So all of that will be assessed later on the playbook. So we can take a look now on the playbook that I've created for that, the Zoe upgrade. And here we have identified the hosts, the environment. So what are needed for my playbook to run on this specific helper? I have here also the tasks and for the tasks uh, I have split them in different files, so it's not very big to, to read, it's easier to read them. And when these tasks are running, uh, I, I have here uh, one check. So after the PTF is applied, I'm going to check if the PTFs are really applied. And if then I'm ending this playbook, so it's just like a, a safety step. So I don't need to continue if the PTFs are there, right? So let's go now take a look uh, on the files, on these tasks more uh, deep. So let's go to the tasks folder and here we have uh, the first task to upload uh, on job to list these PTFs. So I'm using a template model here specifying what is my source, destination where the file is going to be and I'm using templates for that. So this is the template, so it can be reused. Here I'm using uh, variables and I'm listing the PTFs. The next thing I'm gonna do after this template generate the file, I need to change the encoding uh, from ASCII to ABCDIC. And then the next step, I'm gonna uh, submit this job. I'm using the ZOS job submit model and I'm specifying here the source where from where I'm going to upload that. I need to take this job details to register that in a variable. So I can use this set fact and take the specific ID to verify if uh, in this output, in this list, in this report, if the PTFs are there. If so, I'm setting that to true. So is, this is the situation where this playbook will be ending so I'm not proceeding to copy the PTFs and saving uh, some steps. So for example, if I run now, we're going to these PTFs uh, that was here in the variables, we're going to see that then are already uh, applied. So this playbook will end here on this step. So when the tasks are running, uh, we see here this group started and the first step is to upload that template to list the PTFs. Then the ZOS encode module started to, 
do the encoding. Uh, we are going to submit and we see the output here like in a string because uh, we use the join there to put all the answer from the output in a single string so if we go here we see this join uh, when we are doing the set fact and that's needed for us uh, to search and see if we have the, the PTF so we see here that uh, when we have the step to see if the PTFs are applied, that this playbook it ends. So when we change that uh, for the new PTFs we are applying in this video, we're gonna see that this will continue further. So all my PTFs are on the data folder and we are going to use this task uh, the copy module and using the loop so here I have the two PTFs I want to make the upload and these are the files from the source so from my data it's copying to my uh, director on my LPAR and so let me update here uh, what are the new PTFs I'm applying let's check on my SMP uh, if these PTFs are there so just for us to check this so the option 3.2 I will paste here and there we go so we don't have them applied yet so let's run this playbook to upload the PTFs and apply them so when I start here the playbook it start all the process uh, uploading uh, the jobs to list the PTFs to ensure they are there and let me just double check one thing where it's fine yeah so that I was just going to, to know uh, to verify I'm using the right PTFs now so uh, then it starts uh, the upload as these PTFs are not yet applied and no my connection is not the best of the world I've just got the a piece of uh, the video where I was waiting the upload it took a while so around 10 minutes to make this upload uh, again the same process with the second PTF that we are applying uh, once that uh, is done we stop Zoe so we are using the ZOS operator module we have uh, to upload these jobs with the right PTFs inside to be able to receive and apply them. So uh, when we upload that, we need to do the encode like we did for the list. So we are doing the code and we proceed to receive and apply check. And we are just going further if we receive a condition code of zero here. So to ensure that everything is fine on the apply check before we can think and proceed uh, to the real apply so for example if the PTFs were received in another step or uh, something goes wrong we got something different we are not going uh, to apply them so everything was okay we are ready now to apply them so our job uh, is running and we are going to see now that at the end uh, when this is ready we record uh, the DD where the hold actions are so uh, as it finishes I can go to my other instance of VS Code to access uh, my environment and inside of this director I have here uh, the hold the report and this is an ASCII format, so I will just toggle binary here. So just to be able to read this. And there we go. So there are some actions to do for these PTFs. And uh, here are all the description. And we can then, uh, if we are proceeding with that, we can just run what was inside. We can complete all of that, do all checks. How many are check needed? If there is no actions, we can just uh, start Zoe again. So that's the reason I'm not starting on the same playbook. So, uh, just to finish our video, let's uh, go back uh, to our environment now and let's open the SMP and just verify 
if the PTFs were correctly applied. So let's go to the option here to two, and there we go. Now when we see the report, the PTFs are applied. Hope you have enjoyed that and see you on next video.